Hello, everybody! Oh, Dave, you just randomly got so blurry. That's fine. That's <laughs> uh, wow, welcome to our final community stand-up as a non-released product. <laughs> I don't know if people know this, but .NET MAUI is shipping this month, so, supposedly. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't start I should... hedging. You'll freak people out. Yeah, I guess I should promise <laughs> it, but it's happening! It's happening! Woo! Next month, we will have a .NET MAUI community stand-up, and we will be talking about a released product. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Um, I am Maddie. I am a PM on the MAUI.NET team, do a lot of things, and I'm here with my wonderful colleague, Dave. Put your hands right up against the thing. There we go. Hey, I, uh, David, also a uh, PM, Product Manager. We have a new, we have a new title. Mm -hmm. um, working on .NET, MAUI, and Xamarin things. Xamarin yep. has some life left. So uh, super happy to have Brandon here with us. Brandon, you you were with Xamarin well before we were. So why don't you, I mean, I think everybody. Oh, man. Go ahead. Introduce <laughs> yourself to the, to the new folks. We got a lot of new folks chiming in. I was, yeah, I was, I was OG Xamarin back before the Microsoft acquisition, which is basically how I came to Microsoft. Because when I, I remember interviewing at Microsoft uh, when I was in college, and they didn't want me, so I snuck in, <laughs> made the acquisition. But A loophole. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for having me again. Uh, my name is Brandon Minnick. I work as a developer advocate here at Microsoft, and the last year ish of my life has been spent focused on the dotnet maui community toolkit which we'll dive into a little bit later and also share some of our secrets on how we ported the xamarin community toolkit over to dotnet maui and added in all that support but we'll get into all that fun stuff in just a bit yeah yeah well, thank you for joining us um wow yeah okay if this is your first community stand up welcome Welcome to all of you. We have all over the place in the chat today, so that's exciting. So good morning, afternoon, evening. Maybe it's almost Friday for some people. It's it's pretty exciting. Um, what we do here is we'll go through some blogs. because There's not too many this month. I think people are very excited about Maui. We're gearing up. So I won't spend too long talking about blogs. Um, Dave will show some cool packages and PRs that are going on, and then we'll spend most of the time having Brandon tell us all of his stories, his trials and tribulations as one of the maintainers of the community toolkit and, and how that's going and all those things. And then after this, I believe right after this, right, is your community stand up? Yeah, that's so, right. At, in, in almost exactly two hours from now, we okay. have our .NET MAUI community toolkit stand up where you can come yeah. join us and see what even even more about the stuff that we've been working on, and we're also going to chat about our next release, because V1 will release alongside MAUI uh, later this month, and we're already chatting about V1.1, what new features we want to add in next. So come join us, check it out. What bugs you want to fit? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so you'll have an hour break between these to uh, go, I don't know, eat dinner, make some coffee, whatever time of day it is. And then you can um, go hang out with Brandon again. So let me share my screen. Here's our list of links this month. It's beautiful. I'll put it in the chat. Do, 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 do. Nice. We're streaming to all the places as usual. We've got Twitch and two different YouTubes and all the things. Um, a lot of cool links in here this, this month. Um, first and foremost, though, before we get into the blogs, I wanted to share this repo I started. It is my Maui migration repo, where basically, I don't know if any of you were around, it was pre-COVID, but we did a challenge for Android performance, where we basically said, try out all these new settings we shipped, and let us know how much faster your Android app got. And there were a, a lot of really cool tips that came out of that. So what we are trying to do here, um, if you know Sweeky, she's been on Community Stand Up a bunch. She's awesome. Um, she's been working on the .NET Upgrade Assistant tool support for Maui. So what we're asking people to do is try and migrate their libraries and their apps and their packages, whether it's now or after Maui ships or whatever you want, and then let us know how it goes. And I made this beautiful issue template. Look at me. I know how to use things. Um, 
and it just asks you some questions and you just have to be like yeah no like oh okay um did it go well did it work did it not work why not share some details all these other things um and we're going to use this to kind of communicate with you all on how your migrations are going and kind of crowdsource things that we would like the upgrade assistant to pick up that we have not covered yet in our samples and from the applications we've found open source um so yeah just a heads up if you're interested the links in the url list um let me know if you're interested we'll probably blog about it at some point we have a lot of blogs coming up this month so did you, you know. end up doing the yaml thing or no no i should i there you, you can make YAML. issue templates way prettier with yaml <coughs> i'm too busy shipping maui so just sweet talk to gerald <laughs> gerald can do it for you right i know gerald probably will just knock it out for me he's he's great i should really touch yaml again though it's been a while Ugh, gross. Um, hey, RC2 shipped, and RC3 is shipping soon. Yeah. We got a lot Ooh, of RCs. A lot of RCs. And I believe Vijay is actually in the chat right now, so that's cool. Great blog. Instead of Dave's blog about RC2, this is a wonderful developer thoughts blog about RC2. The big thing you might notice is Tizen popped up. Samsung Tizen is now in our templates. Very exciting. If you don't want to deal with it, you can just delete the folder. But it's there. You can target all the different Samsung devices that run Tizen, your watches and fridges. I don't know. I don't know what a lot of things run Tizen. Um, and of course, a bunch of other things. The big, big focus of everybody right now is obviously bug fixes. So hopefully you're having a more and more stable environment with every update. Um, it has been quite fun. So uh -huh. target yeah. frameworks, yeah, those updated, yeah. right? Yeah, all of the target frameworks have been updated. Um, I mean, those those really haven't changed for the last couple of releases, and I think that they're pretty locked in for uh, GA, which is good, right? Because as you rev from preview to preview, I know that it's been quite a bit of change, and that's why we maintained a bunch of little migration tip sheets. Um, but I think the coolest, I mean, ties in itself is cool. Uh, it's awesome to have Samsung, you know, taking a bet on the technology to support mm -hmm. their platform uh, and and run on their devices. So there's so many of them. Uh, the coolest thing for us in the .NET space, I think, is, you know, this is the exercise that demonstrates how we can partner with other organizations to support additional platforms on our stuff, right? Like, so people ask us all the time about Linux. Um, and so if you want to see Linux happen, you know, we, we are capable of partnering up and, and making that happen. We would love to see it. Um, but you don't need to wait for us. You can take the reins and, uh, we've got, you know, the infrastructure and the learnings from, uh, collaborating with the Samsung team here too. So I think it's a great, you know, I just want to acknowledge that it's a, it's a cool thing just above and beyond, Hey, you can target another thing. It's, you know, we're open source. We are collaborating with other uh, stakeholders and making things happen. Sweet. Um, I am responding to the chat, so I'll pause for a sec. But Almir asked about <laughs> VS Mac, if it's in the next update. Um, what, so one thing you're going to notice when we release Maui, the SDK is going stable at, in May, whenever that happens this month. Um, the tooling is going to be in preview for another couple, another one more release for Windows. So what we're going to do is ship the new Visual Studio IDE preview. It's going to have a bunch of like special Maui stuff in it, the workload updates and everything. Um, and then Mac is going to come along with that as well. A little bit slower just because VS for Mac is just also going to ship this soon month. Their RC just came out. So um, we're going to continue to add kind of more Maui support throughout the rest of the Q2, three, Q3. <laughs> I can't, I always say summer, but I know it's only summer in the Northern hemisphere. So yeah. calendar really quarters work. or fiscal quarters. What are we talking yeah. about? Yeah. Calend that... <laughs> August and September, we're going to continue to add more and more visual studio for Mac support with the goal of having it kind of like finalized when we get into um, the September, October, November done at seven timeframe. So, but it's working. I mean, Dave has been hot reloading with VS Mac, which like, <laughs> Blows your mind. <laughs> Blows my mind. Blows my mind. So cool. Um, all right. Telerik and Sync Fusion. I have one blog of each today. I wanted to kind of highlight a lot of the work that our um, our community is doing, both for Xamarin and Maui controls, because you know Xamarin still exists. This one's cool. 
It is literally just a control for image editing. So you can take your image and then do all these commands to it, like crop, blur, brighten, whatever. Which I've always been like, I would just open it in the platform thing. I would never figure out how to do that myself. But they just do it for you, which is magic. So I'm hoping they bring this over to Maui too, because this is cool. Like, look how easy this is. You can just crop an image. So you don't have to do all the logic for this in your app yourself. You can build an Instagram clone now, no problem. <laughs> um, but this was a cool control and I was very excited about it. And then there's a free trial, by the way. The other one, this one is a blog about overlays with one of the coolest. There's a lot of cool things in Maui, but Z index. I love the index <laughs> big fan, um, which is the Z axis, right? Like on top of each other going into the phone screen. I don't know if that's how you describe it instead of two dimensional X and Y. Um, so this was a cool blog. I like this is much better way to describe it is just looking at this image than the way I just tried to describe it. But um, yeah, just a little bit of learning about it, bringing views and stuff to the front or the back. Um, it's very cool. I love it. Check it out. And there's a lot of things you can do with Maui. Maui's pretty lit. Okay, finally, last blog. It's actually a blog series by Andreas. But he's been going through and replicating this app called Foodora, which I think is hilarious. But um, I'm reading the chat. Yes, Dave. Dave joined a call earlier today on, like, not his good camera. <coughs> and, like, the lighting was horrible. And it was, like, the angle was like this. Mm-hmm. And he just looked miserable, and his hair was all... And I was like, jeez. Usually he looks so polished. I was oh. reading email, and I had bed head. So. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> had a good time. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll share that later. You get on my nerves. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, this is all in Maui. Andreas is doing a great job with it. I think we're on blog four now. This is the first. But there's a whole bunch of different things. Um, I always, I've always loved these UI replicating ones, so... Yeah, that's it. I was quick today. That's pretty good for me. So I am going to unshare and let Dave take over whenever he's ready. Remove. Remove my screen right. share. Uh, share um, my screen. I guess I could have shared my screen earlier and then that would have been faster. That's all right. I will put the links back in the chat <laughs> and I'm going to add you. Cool. Oh, I know this repo. Red you know this repo? So I wanted to, uh, you know, those of you who have seen it already know all about it, but... Um, Sometimes uh, we go from release to release so quickly that I don't always merge my PRs for the releases and then the thing doesn't work. Hey, it's working this morning. So uh, if, if you're like, last time I checked this thing, it was broken. What's Dave doing? Uh, Dave was doing other things like staring at his email. Um, but now uh, this works. So if you're looking for samples, and that's really the theme of all the stuff I'm going to share today is different samples. The theme is not me, but the theme is samples. Um, so you can come check that out. Uh, this is running today on RC2, which is the public RC. RC3 will be coming out and um, should just work. I don't think that there are really any uh, fundamental changes that would require me to update it. So that's cool. But we are updating these sample apps, such as the podcast app. This is actually, you know, a quite, uh, quite a bit more complex than the weather app. It has both Blazor and native and hybrid in here. Um, so, uh, check this one out as well. And uh, they even tell you that it's passing. My build is currently failing on windows, but that's just the CI build because it doesn't have the signed NuGet package for mono tool chain, something, 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 which we all see every time internally. Uh, so anyway, um, but check this one out. We, we do update these uh, with each release, and James is on top of it much better than I am. <laughs> so uh, this one has always been working, uh, whereas mine has been a little more hit and miss. All right, cool. And then I wanted to do this one, and then I'll go into some more uh, from the community. Um, I've seen a couple of requests for, hey, I really would like a sample app, <laughs> like something super basic. Um, and the thing is with the documentation and everything, we've got a lot of code samples, but we don't have running app samples that match up with every single doc. So, uh, what I've started to do, and we are going to continue working on this and filling out more and more samples, and then we'll move all the samples over to a official repository. This isn't going to live here, um, but starting to build out some samples. So I've got the flyout page tab page, and then I've got three variations of shell, uh, 
navigation samples. So if you have something you're like, man, why am I stuck on this thing? How in the heck do I do X, Y, Z? Um, and it's a fundamental thing. Let me know because I'll just spin up a template and do it for you um, and then add it to the repo. So this is in response to what we've been hearing from some people new to the ecosystem. And some of us who've been around a while sometimes forget it's a little bit of a mind bend to figure out tabbed page, for example. And I will say that if you're looking for a recommendation, start with Shell. <laughs> I don't, not everybody on the team will agree with me, but uh, I'm telling you, once you built a couple of these flyout page, tab page things with all the code you have to slap in there to make that thing work, Shell is just a joy to work with because it's so much easier and you can template pretty much everything. So. I love Shell. And the podcast app is all Shell and it's yeah. worked great for me. So And it scales better because it does. Shell yes. if you're gonna take advantage of dependency injection, which you should, highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, Shell will handle a lot of that for you and then you don't have to worry about if you have a page nested inside of a page, nested inside of a yeah. page, nested yeah. inside of a page. It can get messy. But with Shell you just say, go to this page. It goes, okay. Exactly. Right. Yes. No biggie. <laughs> A whole lot easier to handle those kinds of navigation scenarios, go directly to something, uh, the hierarchy, the stacks. Um, and also it works great on desktop. So, and you can you can have the same code that gives you a nice desktop, you know, style menu, et cetera, uh, or have the mobile tabs. And that's actually something that you can see in the weather app uh, is it does both tabs when you're on mobile, but fly out when you're on uh, desktop. All right, so uh, Vladislav, who Brandon, you know Vlad. Vlad, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, he's in the Ukraine or from the Ukraine, right? Isn't he? Yep, he's in Dnipro in Ukraine. He's doing well. He's doing okay. Still doing okay. I get I get nervous every time I turn on the news, but he sends us yeah. updates, and they're they're a resilient bunch, and he's he's proud to be there. So we're proud of him. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I thought of him immediately once uh, things started blowing up in the news. Um, so he is an awesome contributor to many of our projects and especially the community toolkit. Um, but I was looking for recent updates for Maui things in GitHub and came across his .NET templates project. So um, I think this is a really good example uh, that you can check out. And given that I know who he is, I have a pretty good, pretty good confidence in recommending this repository to folks to check out patterns. Um, so it is a, a, a NuGet package that he ships with templates. And so you can check out some of his NuGet config stuff there as well, um, which we're going to talk about a little bit with Brandon. Um, but then you can also see some of the application and logic and things like that in here that is specific to Maui. Um, so you can see his configuration of the Maui project. And I scanned this and it all looks relatively uh, up to date and new. So this probably runs just fine. Um, and he has touched it recently. So I don't really, I'm not an expert on onion architecture. <laughs> I've heard of it. I don't know if this is a Shrek reference, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I was literally going to say ogres right. are like onions. Ogres. So. <laughs> With the ogre architecture. Uh, which I think all of the Shrek shows just like appeared on one of the streaming services recently. So Oh, I know binge, what I'm going to do. Go binge all that stuff. Anyway, so there's one. Um, and then Andreas, who you, you shared a blog for him just a moment ago, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I pinged him. I've got two of his repos here, which I think would be worth checking out. The, uh, the Maui Hue for controlling your Philips Hue uh, stuff. You probably need your own keys to deal with uh, the Philips service here, from what he told me. So, uh, but you know, hey, it's a, it's a Maui app, and you can run it and check it out. And the other one that I I was really excited to see was the Maui Biometrics. Um, this uses the plugin for Biometrics. If I go down here to his CS Proj real quick, it's uh, nice to see that he has a .NET six app with the plugin for fingerprint working. So, you know, we want to see more and more of these packages that have been used for years in Xamarin, mm -hmm. making, the, making the journey up here to .NET 6 so that we can leverage all of these things in our Maui apps. Um, so check that one out. Don't know what the app looks like. Might look like nothing, um, but you can do my biometrics with it. And that's the important bit. Uh, so Cube UI. You know, I, I want to run this. I haven't run this yet myself. Um, it looks like it's a Blazor Maui hybrid app. Uh, you can see he's got quite a bit of HTML in here. 
Um, but that's a nice looking UI. It shows you some of the compl complex things that you can do uh, with a .NET MAUI Blazor hybrid app. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, as an example, check that out. Uh, if you're into Kubernetes, you probably will really uh, make, maybe that's useful for you. My, my son, who is, uh, well, I guess he's basically a senior in college doing computer science right now. He's like, have you ever heard of this thing, Kubernetes? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Don't, couldn't, couldn't tell you a ton about it myself. But. I can't believe he's already a senior. Well, it's because he graduated high school with two years already completed in college. Oh. And so it's by credits. Oh, um, all right. Yeah. I was going to say, where did the, where did that, when did that happen? <laughs> yeah, right. I know, right? Well, okay, I've already got one, I got one married kid. and I'm going to be a grandfather. So it stands to reason that, you know, I know. So I look, exciting. I look in Act 15, but uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got pr uh -oh. trouble in the chat. Trouble in the chat. Former Are you allowed? Maui team Maui member. Team. Alex, wow. We love you, Alex. No, we hate you, Alex. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. We love you. He's moved on to a very Make cool, cool new role. So yes, he's, uh, he's now he's now a Fortnite expert. Yeah, he's gonna give me his free fee bucks. That's what I. <laughs> uh, Maps UI. I don't know a ton about this, but uh, it has long supported Xamarin. You can also do Avalonia with it, Ooh. and uh, they have some Maui bits in here. So it looks like the, most of the mapping here probably happens with Skia. Does anybody here use Maps UI? Anybody know anything about this? Check it out. All right, cool. Because uh, if you don't know this already, uh, now is a good time for me to tell you. Uh, so the Xamarin Forms Maps library, the NuGet package that we ship for that, has not yet made the transition, and it won't be there at GA for .NET 6. Um, so it'll be a post-GA thing for .NET 7. We, of course, can ship it as a NuGet package. Um, but uh, just heads up, if you need maps, uh, then you'll want to look at a solution like this or wait for us to ship the maps piece. All right, and we also have some other maps things in the works. So that was it. That is, uh, that's some of the cool stuff. Just a few of the cool things. I stopped after you know, a while of looking because there's a lot of Maui things popping up these days mm. on GitHub. Uh, so if you're looking for sample code and you- Oh, oh, <laughs> you out of his browser. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> what a rookie move, Dave. I know, really. Like, we've never done this before. It's not like we've been doing this for three years or something. Well, perfect. I'm glad he was done. He'll be back. Oh, he's back. <laughs> I I went to I went to, to unshare and I hit the at least. It's fine. It's fine. We still love you, but <laughs> cool. Yeah, there. I mean, there is a lot of Maui stuff popping up because uh, Maui is pretty cool. So. Yeah, and we're, we're getting to the place where, you know, we can be more productive with it. The tooling is getting there where we can be more productive there. So, um, you know, where we are in the journey, you know, for everybody who's didn't hit the exit button and is still listening, you know, where we are in the journey, let's, you know, talk about for just a quick second that, you know, we're going to GA. The SDK is going to be out there, as Maddie indicated, the tooling will be in preview. So it'll be in different levels of completeness and effectiveness. Um, and But, you know, really the priority right now is getting these libraries and ecosystem things in place for .NET 6 so that if there are things that are not in the box or you don't want to build yourself, you can take advantage of them. And and so it will we'll become more productive, release over release, month over month. Um, so setting some some early expectations for you. GA is going to be very exciting, but it's really just the beginning of our story and our journey for decades to come. Yeah. I mean, that, I guess... That's 20 years old. Come on. Woo. Um, I'm also <laughs> putting the link to the Build Conference in the chat, which, I don't know, if you were thinking, like, when might Maui ship? That could maybe be a time that would make sense for something to ship. You know, no problem. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but we also do have some presence, of course, talking about Maui in a couple different talks. And there's a lot of cool stuff at Build this year. Um, there's, I think, only 15 live sessions. So uh, that's pretty cool. But, yeah. Um, all right. Brandon, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Woo!
Ooh, dive into God, the toolkit. Slides. Woo! Ooh. Yeah, well, I cheated a little bit. So um, <laughs> uh, Sam uh, Sam Basu had me on for the Telerix snorkeling into Maui. Um, I guess half day extravaganza where we talked about Maui for four hours straight, and I made these slides for that. But I figured if we're talking about the toolkit today, I I want to bring it up again here because there's three awesome toolkits that we've been working really hard on that the community will hopefully really enjoy. Um, and the best part is the community toolkits are made by the community for the community. So this is very much a community led project where we want you to help us out come contribute um there's a bunch of core maintainers i think there's about five maybe six uh on the dotnet maui community toolkit and we've been working nights and weekends none of us get paid for this this is all uh stuff we contribute in our spare time but yeah we're getting excited we're going to release right alongside dotnet maui we've been following the same release schedule so every time dotnet maui preview came out with the new release and every time there's new rc we push out our our new rc so you can check out the toolkits today but what are they um there's actually three toolkits that i recommend for every dotnet maui developer we have the dotnet maui toolkit so community toolkit.maui we have the mvvm toolkit the uh, community toolkit.mvvm and we have the maui markup toolkit which is community toolkit.maui.markup. So these are the names of the NuGet packages if you want to uh, add them into your app. And the goal is just to help improve your developer experience as a .NET MAUI developer. So we want you to write less code. Uh, pretty much, you know, think about all that code you've copy pasted between apps. You know, I'm absolutely guilty of this where I'll have a base view model. And then every time I create a new project, I just copy paste my base view the base view model in or maybe you have a converter that you reuse all the time because how many times do you bind to is busy but you really need is not busy so you have your inverted bool converter uh that's the goal in the toolkit is to put all that stuff that you would copy paste into one place so you don't have to do that anymore and then also add in some cool functionality that you can take advantage of too so just jamming through some of these real quick um we have all of this stuff in the .NET MAUI community toolkit. I won't show them all off, but wanted to let you know we have things like snack bar, toast. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole slew of behaviors. Um, this is actually one I do want to show off because in our toolkit, we have a sample app. So this is the sample app and we have samples for every feature. Uh, so needless to say, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in the sample app, but you know, one of my favorites is um, like this multi-validation behavior here. Uh, oh gosh, that text isn't super easy to read, but let's see, maybe I can whoop, zoom in a little bit, there you go. but, um, but basically look, check out this example here. Uh, cause this is password validation. And if we have an app that requires a login, we're probably going to need to validate passwords. And if I start typing here, the text Ooh. is red and it says, everything here is false. Uh, it says, you know, you need at least one digit. So if I type the number one. Well, that'll become true. And if it says, well, we need at least one uppercase character. So let's put an uppercase, give it a symbol, uh, hit at least eight characters. And boom, once we do, Ooh. the text turns green. Everything down here is true. And if you think about just how difficult that would be to do in your own app, you know, I've, I've had to implement stuff like this on my own manually. Um, lots and lots of code <laughs> and lots of potential bugs which is never fun. So we have cool things like this multi-validation behavior that this in the sample app is maybe 20 lines of code because wow. you just have to tell it like we're going to validate on multiple things and one needs to be a digit, one needs to be an uppercase letter, and then it just does it for you. So uh, hopefully that'll save everybody <laughs> lots of time, lots, save lots of time, save lots of headaches, prevent lots of headaches. Uh, we have tons of converters in the .NET MAUI toolkit. Uh, and there's, there's going to be more to come, but hopefully these are the most common things like, you know, we talked about inverting a bool. How many times have we had to do that in a converter? Or maybe we just want to, uh, check if something's equal, uh, or maybe you just want to see if, is it null? Uh, so we have lots of converters. 
we have right now only one extension, but the color animations are pretty cool because you can animate your colors. And I'll show this off real quick. This is one of my favorite demos too. Um, so like right now, the background color and the text color here are not moving. But if I say animate, we'll see it animate to whatever color we choose. So uh, this is kind of our extension for the animations library, because to be honest with you, I, I never thought you could animate a color. Uh, but then once I saw this, I was like, this is incredible. I can think of a million places to use this. Uh, and you can kind of fade in and out of colors, so it's not necessarily this jarring flip between red and green or whatever it might be in your app. We've got one layout so far, uh, uniform items. So this is like, it. it's not grid, but you can kind of think of it like a grid uh, where if you just want to have a layout where everything is spaced evenly apart, whether your rows or your columns are always spaced evenly, uh, and then even as you add more things to it, they'll continue to be spaced evenly. Uh, that's uniform items layout. And then we also have, this is another fun one to show off. We have drawing view. Speaking of Vlad, he spent a ton of effort putting together drawing view and it does exactly what it sounds like. We can draw on this canvas here. So we can give a canvas a little background color if we want. And then he added all these cool functionality or cool fun cool functionality and features like uh, it'll take you can take a snapshot of it and display that. Um, so super useful if you're doing something with say like a signature pad and you need to capture somebody's signature. Well, you can capture it, you can display it on the next screen. Uh, he's got all these cool things where maybe you just want to generate random images. You can do that. Um, you can always just tell it, nope, just display the current image. So lots and lots of cool stuff in here. And that's just one toolkit so far. We have another toolkit called the MVVM toolkit. And I really think this is going to change the game for all MVVM developers. Yes, this is we're talking .NET MAUI, but this MVVM toolkit is totally agnostic to your framework. So if you're doing WPF, if you're just, uh, doing Xamarin Forms, if you're doing .NET MAUI, this works. And one of my favorite things with this is these new attributes. They were just introduced in the latest version, version eight of the MPVM toolkit. And good gosh, all of the boilerplate duplicate code that we always have to write in MPVM that we all complain about because you know if you want to create a bindable property, then you first have to create the field. And then in the property, every time you set it, you have to check if it changed and alert. I notify property changed. It's a pain. And that's kind of where my base view model, copy, paste, copy, paste would always come in. But check this out. So what the MVVM toolkit does now, it takes advantage of source generators to write that code for you. Ooh. So if we look, let's, let's actually look right here. We have a a string that's a read-only expression body member property um, for full name, and it's referencing first name and last name. So these are two properties, first name and last name, and we're using full name in our UI layer. <laughs> UI layer. But the first thing you'll notice, this first name property, it has a capital F. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't write that, we didn't make that. All we did, we made a backing field called private string first name with a lowercase f, and we slap this observable property attribute on it. Once you do that, the source code generators will generate capital F first name for us. And anytime that first name changes, it'll automatically call I notify property change. It'll do the whole, um, cause there's actually a whole slew of things you can take advantage of with um, notifying about properties. Like basically saying like, it's about to change or the change is happening. And then the change happened. Uh, and it does all of that for you. So all we have to do is write our field, slap the observable property uh, attribute on it, and we're good. And then one of the problems with MVVM that I've always run into is if I have a bindable property in my view model that references other properties, well, anytime these properties change, like anytime first name changes, I got to let the UI know that full name has changed, but full name doesn't really have a setter. Um, so there's whole, usually a whole bunch of extra code we have to write manually to do that. But here we can just say, also notify change for, and let it know that anytime first name changes, let I notify property change that know that full name also changed. Uh, so 
really, really, really cool stuff. Um, I've already gone through and started ripping out code. You can delete hundreds, if not thousands of lines of code from your app, and it feels so good. Um, the other cool one is this I command. So I commands, you don't have to, but most commonly, probably 90% of my, my commands will just point to a method. So we kind of go through this ceremony of like, all right, let's create a public command that can just point to a private method. Well, if we just slap the I command attribute on a method, again, it'll use source generators to automatically generate a command called, in this case, greet user command. So it just appends command um, onto, the, onto the method name. And you can even see here, we're referencing greet user command as if we created it, even though we didn't have to. So if you ever want to have a command written for you, just slap the I command attribute on there and boom, you don't have to worry about newing up commands or all that crazy stuff. And just <clears throat> anytime you can rip out code from your app, that's my favorite. So <laughs> I'm super, super excited for the MVVM toolkit. Highly recommend it for everything. You can still use it in Xamarin Forms, use it in .NET MAUI. You can use it in your WBF apps, anywhere you're doing MVVM. Take advantage of this because I think this is a game changer. I have a question uh, about that particular example. So <clears throat> greet user command is the notify can execute for. Mm -hmm. The method is greet user. In my code, can I navigate? Does Visual Studio help me navigate from greet user command to greet user? Does it know that those are related? Um, so, well, so this is all done with source generators. Um, so yeah. that that actual code is written for you. Uh, so you, you should be able to drill down in Visual Studio to the generated code. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you search for greet user command or if we were to like right click on this and say go to reference, yeah. Visual Studio should be able to find that. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about, we I'm should thinking double about check that the, the developer like myself who doesn't have a deep understanding of code generators. Like I, I generally mm -hmm. know what's, what's going on there. But okay. um, the convention of greet user, greet user command, if I don't know that convention, then if I'm looking at this code cold, how can I figure that out, right? Yeah. Is kind of where, where I'm coming from. Yeah. Um, so I was just curious. I was just curious. I think it's awesome. I would totally use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because... Um... Really what's going on here is we're using partial classes and source generators. So we have the code that we wrote in our partial class, and then the source generator creates its own partial class to essentially bolt on everything for us. But yeah, we should, Visual Studio should let you drill down into like, if you're like, where's this great user command? And you right click on it and say, go to definition or go to implementation. It should be smart enough, but um, yeah. that code is all available for you in Visual Studio. So. Um, there's a cool thing in Visual Studio where you can actually, in the Solution Explorer, you can find the analyzer that you're using. So uh, just like you can look at all the NuGet package dependencies, in that same area, there will be a dropdown for analyzers. And if you just expand that out, you'll see a community toolkit analyzer, and you can expand that out. And then you can see all the generated code or all the code that has been generated um, right there. And I know if you double click there, it'll open the file and you can see all the, it looks kind of nasty because it's auto-generated, but uh, all, all that code is just C-sharp code that's been written. Just, it happens to have been written by a source generator. <laughs> huh. Huh. All right. So trying to get through these so we can also talk about how we migrated Xamarin Community Toolkit to .NET MAUI. Uh, the last one. I've always got to talk about this. This is my favorite one. Uh, mm. Although MVVM Toolkit's quickly becoming new favorite, favorite, favorite. <laughs> but love all my children equally. Uh, <laughs> community Toolkit Maui Markup. Uh, if, you, if you ever are using C Sharp to create your UI for .NET MAUI, uh, you can use communitytoolkit.maui.markup to bring in these beautiful, fluent extension methods. So... Uh, with for a button, for example, we can write it using these extension methods like dot text, and we can add the text to the button. If we want to center the button, instead of having to say like 
uh, what is it? Horizontal layout options equals layout options dot center and vertical layout options. Equal, we can just say dot center and it'll boop, put it right in the center. Nice. Uh, and then binding. Binding's probably my favorite with this because uh, just it makes things easier. Um, so first of all, uh, we can do bindings just like we do in XAML. So we still can do MVVM. And also, you can bring this into a project that already has XAML too, by the way. So this isn't, you have to exclusively use this instead of XAML. Nope. Even in the, blah, even in the Community Toolkit sample app, we mix and match. We have some pages that are built it with the C Sharp, uh, the Maui markup extensions, and some pages are built in XAML. It was just kind of like, Sometimes one makes sense and sometimes one's a little bit easier mm -hmm. or sometimes I'm just the one that wrote it and I like to do it this way, but uh, check out this. So, so we have our button binding and we're actually binding to another entry and we, we created the variable entry one up above. It's not shown here, but we're binding to its length and that'll determine if the button's enabled. So think of something like you have to enter in your name, then you can click submit. Well, if the user hasn't entered in their name yet and the length of the text is zero, then that submit button should be disabled because it'll be impossible for somebody to submit a blank name. Everybody's got at least one character in their name, as, this as far as I know. But yeah, we are binding to that entry. So we can just set the binding source to entry one. And then we can do our converters in line here too. Instead of having go to go through the ceremony of creating and another class that implements iValue converter. Um, iValue converter, if you ever used those before, you know they're not type safe. Uh, everything's just an object. Well, here we can specify the types. And so we can make a converter in line that is type safe. And we can just say things like, hey, if the length is not zero, then the button should be enabled. Easy. So highly, highly recommend these for everybody who creates UI in C Sharp, because these extension methods just make your life so much easier. And even if even if you are a XAML person, you can still take advantage of these. There might be a couple places where this just makes the code that much easier, that much simpler to either write or maintain as well. So do go check them out. I've included a uh, all this information on my website. So at codetraveler.io slash community hyphen toolkit. You can find links to all of these toolkits. You can find links to all of the documentation. The docs are all up on docs.microsoft.com. And then also links to a bunch of sample apps. So I know Maddie included it in the URL list. So if you got the URL list, you'll have a link to codetraveler.io slash community hyphen toolkit. And now I think we can jump into migration stories. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> All right, let's get out of the slides. We won't actually look at the documentation today. That was for that was for <laughs> Teller. <laughs> that was more me just being proud that everything's on docs.microsoft.com because oh, so was, snazzy. Yeah, well, like I said, like this this project for me, um, it kind of came about with you know, but it was about a year ago. I reached out to David. and I was like, hey, David, like, yeah, I'm one of the maintainers on Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, who's working on the .NET Maui community toolkit? And he was like, well, nobody yet. And so I was like, well, I know how to do it. <laughs> I got, I got nights and weekends to burn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell my wife that that's not true. But, uh, but yeah, so the journey really started about a year ago. Cause we had to, because this is, because the .NET Maui community toolkits are Microsoft backed, that meant I had to get. I had to work with legal and marketing and obviously you amazing folks on the engineering team and uh, working with the docs team. So it's been a big orchestral um, collaboration. But let's talk about migrating your NuGet packages. So everything I just talked about was the .NET Maui community toolkits. And we're going to back up. We're going to kind of go back in time a little bit to talk about the Xamarin community toolkit because... Without the Xamarin Community Toolkit, the .NET Maui Community Toolkit wouldn't exist, or it would be very different. <laughs> so the Xamarin Community Toolkit, super similar to things we talked about for the .NET Maui Community Toolkit. It's got converters, behaviors, UI views, extensions. Um, 
And it's also being used by almost 1.6 thousand uh, GitHub repos. And I don't know how many downloads the NuGet package has nowadays, but it's got a lot. So this is definitely important to fellow Xamarin developers. And if it's important to Xamarin fellow Xamarin developers, then it's going to be important to fellow Maui developers. So we brought it over. And I do want to say... If you own a library, if you have a, a NuGet package that has a dependency on Xamarin Forms, so just like Xamarin Community Toolkit here, we have a dependency on Xamarin Forms. If you also have a library with a dependency on Xamarin Forms, you got to do a little bit of work. Um, you've got to basically swap out Xamarin Forms for .NET MAUI uh, because your NuGet package won't be able to work on .NET MAUI until you do. And long story short is Xamarin Forms, if you dig into its dependencies, it's targeting all these things like, I mean, Mono Android, that was, that's Xamarin Android. <laughs> it's, you know, it has all these dependencies on libraries that don't work in .NET MAUI. .NET MAUI requires .NET 6, it requires uh, .NET 6-iOS and .NET 6-Android and all those new libraries. So. There is a little bit of work we have to do as library maintainers. And now's the best time because we have a release candidate available. So you know the APIs aren't going to change on you and there's not going to be uh, any terrible breaking changes. So definitely, definitely recommend starting to work on that now. And if you can, time your release like we're doing with the Community Toolkit to leave preview alongside um, .NET MAUI later this month. Okay, so so Xamarin Community Toolkit exists. It's got millions of downloads, literally Ooh. amazing, and and we wanted to make sure we didn't leave anybody in the dark. So uh, there's actually two things we did. Let's see if I can do this uh, Maui compat. Let's bring that up, and then side by side with let's see Maui Community Toolkit NuGet. And yes, I totally used Google instead of NuGet search because it's better. NuGet search is not great, but that's okay. They're working on it. Take the survey. Ah! <laughs> They're our PM sister team or cousin team, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I can find it. Just that's, I say most places on the web, I'll switch over to search engine than using an internal search even even Amazon's search isn't great, so it's hard. Search is hard. Yeah, search is hard. <laughs> All right, so what we did, we we took kind of two paths when doing this migration. We created one. This is the Xamarin Community Toolkit Maui Compat library. Um, we do still have, uh, let's see, where's our versions? Boop. So we do still have the preview tag on it. Uh, but you will notice that its version is 202. So that stays locked in step with the version of Xamarin Community Toolkit 202. But it's been completely ported over to Maui with, I'll say no breaking changes, but there's always going to be a couple things. Um, but for the most part, and I'll show you what, how we did it in just a second, uh, we just kind of swapped out the code. Um, then with communitytoolkit.maui, the .NET MAUI community toolkit, this is a new package. So this is breaking changes. Um, this is given us the opportunity to rethink how we architect things, to um, replace custom renderers with handlers. So using the new recommended, the faster, more performant way to do um, platform specific stuff in MAUI is handlers. Uh, so we want to take advantage of that. So for your library, keep that in mind. There's there's a couple different paths you can go down. One would be to essentially stay lockstep and essentially and release a NuGet package with we had a dot Maui compat because we liked how, how that sounded. It lets folks know that it's basically the same thing, but it supports it's compatible with Maui. Um, so you could do that or you can just kind of rip the bandaid off, do the whole breaking change and essentially rebrand because eventually, 
you know, think five years down the road. Do you really want Xamarin to be in the name of your .NET MAUI NuGet package? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but one thing you can do is NuGet will allow you to deprecate packages, and they'll also point you to the new ones. So, for example, let's see, MVVM Lite on NuGet. Shout out to coworker Laurent. Um, he actually handed over the reins to the MVVM community toolkit that we've been talking about. So anybody that comes to use MVVM Lite, because it's been a beloved MVVM um, framework for a long, long time, for gosh, <laughs> all the way back to 2014. Way to go, Laurent. Uh, but when they come here, they'll see that it's no longer being updated, and the recommendation is communitytoolkit.mvvm. And what's also cool is there's another configuration you can do in NuGet so that if somebody adds this package to their app or maybe updates to a newer version, they'll also see this notification. Like NuGet will let you know, like, hey, just, just FYI, this package has been deprecated and here's the suggested alternative. So this, this would be my recommendation. Um, just make that break, create a new name, Heck, even in GitHub, you can rename your repo and GitHub will automatically redirect folks to the new repo. So if somebody was looking for your Xamarin plugin uh, GitHub repo, you can actually just rename that. And if they go to that old URL, like maybe there's blog posts written about it, um, that link will still be valid and it'll rewrite them, re reroute them to your .NET MAUI plugin repo name. So there's all these cool tools that we can leverage to make sure our existing users can come along with us in this .NET MAUI journey. Woo! Okay. So <laughs> let's, what do we have? Five minutes? Let's look at some code. Um, let's jump back to Xamarin Community Toolkit because I want to show you what we did. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see mauicompat.sh, so that's a script that we wrote, and then also mauicompatsteps.md. Um, so essentially what we do every time we push out a new version of Xamarin Community Toolkit now, we, and a lot of this is done via automation, but on the high level, we make a branch off of that tag. So we'll have, um, Whatever, whatever version of Xamarin Community Toolkit we're about to make, um, we'll, we can create that tag for it. And then you can actually branch from that tag. So you know that the code that you're tweaking, that you're uh, porting over to Maui is going to be exactly the same code. It's in lockstep that we don't have to necessarily maintain code in the same code base, but one's Maui, one's forms. It can get, it can get a little messy, a little confusing. Um, so yeah, we chose to do it off of anytime we make that tag and then we run this script, which I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. And then there's still a little bit of manual work to do. Um, and we explain kind of what's going on, but this is more of a just reminder for us to come in and do a couple tweaks, but really, really where all the magic happened is, is in this script that we wrote. Um, I, I wrote the script initially, and now speaking of Vlad, Vlad, Vlad's taking ownership of it and doing just an awesome job. But if we if we squint our eyes just a little bit, and I zoom in just a little bit, um, essentially what we do is we create a new Maui library, and essentially copy paste over all the code. Uh, so we create that new new Maui library, and then. We bring in, so we're leveraging the directory build props. So instead of having to go in and every, edit every CS proj file, you can just do it with this directory build props. So that's where we can slide in all of our things about like the NuGet package and the versioning and all that stuff. And whoo, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this script. All right, so here we go. So then we get into the fun stuff and you can do this manually um, or feel free to come in here and just steal this, copy paste this. Cause I mean, we spent a long time figuring this stuff out. So 
I would love for more folks to take advantage of it. But basically what it's doing is changing namespaces. So things like um, all the Xamarin Forms namespaces mm -hmm. have to be changed over. And some of them will use Xamarin.CommunityToolkit. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's just going to the new one. Woo! Not that one. But um, where is somewhere in here we change it to Xamarin over to Maui. Oh, it's staring right at me. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. So yeah, things like um, Xamarin Forms color is now Microsoft Maui graphics color. Um, things like Xamarin Forms image changes over to Microsoft Maui controls image. Um, Forms Week Event Manager is now Microsoft Maui Week Event Manager. So a lot of this stuff is pretty easy to figure out. Um, so if you're doing just a one-time, I am essentially going to port my code all over to .NET MAUI, then only continue with .NET MAUI. You only have to do this once, but with Xamarin Community Toolkit, since we still continue to plan on having service releases, we wanted to make sure it stayed up to date, which is why we have all these scripts written so we don't have to hand manually do it every time. But yeah, for the most part, porting your stuff over is essentially just uh, creating that new repo. So you say .NET new Maui lib, that'll create the new Maui library, then copy pasting everything over, and then just kind of going through and changing things from Xamarin forms dot whatever to Microsoft Maui dot whatever. And it's really not too bad. They're, there might be a couple of places where you'll take advantage of the compatibility features. Uh, let's see if I search for compat. Oh no, compat's all over this. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Ah, if I go backwards, there we go. <clears throat> so certain things like like that you can take advantage of, like Microsoft Maui controls compatibility. Um, heck, even even custom renderers have com have compatibility, so we're reusing some of those. Compatibility, it's not perfect, perfect. So you might have to tweak some things. You'll want to move those to handlers eventually anyways. But in this case, yeah. since this is just our Maui compatible version of Xamarin Community Toolkit, mm -hmm. not the .NET Maui Community Toolkit, we were cool with using some of the renderers and the compatibility modes. But yeah, come in, come into our library, check this out. Um, this is how we've been doing it. It really depends on you, it depends on your library, it depends on how many how many maintainers you have, how much work are you able to dedicate to things like these, but you do need to, if you have that Xamarin Forms dependency in your NuGet package, you yeah. do need to rip that out and replace it with .NET MAUI so that it can be used in a MAUI app. So if there's one takeaway, know that if you're a library maintainer that has a package referencing Xamarin Forms, there is a little bit of work because you'll have to replace that with .NET MAUI so that all of us can use your awesome library with our cool. .NET MAUI apps. Cool. I wonder if Sweeky is still in the chat. Sweeky, if you are, we should definitely uh, steal some of his script stuff because Sweeky is working on the upgrade assistant, mm. which mm -hmm. will do a lot of the um, namespace stuff for you. But we have it's wildly untested with libraries and it does not um, you know, create, obviously, the new MAUI lib for you. So I am intrigued on how yeah Suki's the chat she's got it Suki's the best <laughs> why not even i just let her do everything so that would be really it'd be cool if you could just run upgrade assistant as part of this instead of your script and it would do it but yeah i don't know i don't know, we, I don't know. We, we made this before up, upgrade assistant well, upgrade assistant was around that right that probably would have helped a lot but yeah it's we, there. we just suffered all the really. pain of <laughs> figuring this out it didn't look like it was too regexy so i think it's fine by me generally once you start to get into the regex side of the things i'm just no i'm done that's fun yeah that's just, that's just magic <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> any hoops okay um wow i will send the links well, i will put them up as the banner one more time um check it all out follow brandon on twitter he is the best thank you so much for joining um, keep your eyes on the internet for the rest of the month because Maui will be blessing your feeds at some point as a released product. Um, but yeah, tune into Build. We'll see you. Um, lots of great comments in the chat, Brandon, of course, but you, you know you're awesome. You don't need me to tell you that. Uh, but we'll see y'all in a month.
for whatever we do for community stand up next month, it'll probably just be me and Dave sitting here like this. <laughs> just maybe just taking a nap for an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's a Maybe. big release. We'll we'll get the uh, we'll get some of the engineers on. We'll do like a big team round table, ask all the questions yeah. thing. That'd be fun. We'll throw a party. That's all we'll do. Yeah. It's time. It's time. So yeah. all right, everybody. Thank you so much. We will see you soon. Enjoy the month of May. Hopefully, if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's starting to be warm for you. That would be great. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, hopefully it's not too cold yet. So we'll see you all next month. Bye. Cool. See you. Bye.